Welcome back to the Let's Play of In Memoriam, Missing Since January. This is Chapter 10, and we left off towards the end of the air section of the game, uh, syncing up with Jack and Karen's investigation. And in this Buku puzzle, I left this, which uh, we had to find the sixth planet, named for the sixth planet with that image. And there are a lot of different theories on this one. Um, we had SS Neoman's just Saturnus, we had Study Kiek suggest a couple of things. We'll try Saturn first, just for kicks. Saturnus, it won't take either of those. So, the website that Study found was this one, which was interesting. Uh, had names for all sorts of different planets. And the sixth planet on this one was Asclepius. And matched the image on the screen, so we're going to try that one next. And that solves it. So thanks, Stoddy or Stoddy or however you pronounce your name for giving us that one. And thanks for joining us on this Let's Play. And now it looks like we may have a film by the Phoenix instead of Jack. Let's take a look. Clearly, just as Jack and Karen are tracking the Phoenix now, the Phoenix is tracking Jack and Karen. So it's sort of a cat and mouse game going on, but it's not quite clear who the cat is and who the mouse is. So continuing on in air, we're going to Pepisoft next, not to be confused with Pepsi Soft or Pepsi Soft Drinks. And it looks like we're definitely sort of getting deep into the investigation. The Phoenix is really starting to talk about his motives now. Okay, so for this puzzle we need to draw diagrams or image, uh, of the images he's saying, starting with the sun. Now, the solution for this one is on a familiar website. You might recognize this one. It was where the solution for the last one was found. If you look at a different section called Picatrix, it'll say that um, the images we should be using here are the sun, Jupiter, and Venus. And he referenced Cornelius Agrippa in the introduction to this, and if you check Echo that page. Near the bottom, there are these diagrams that match up with ones we can produce in here. So we're looking for the Sun, Jupiter, and Venus. I'm going to switch back here. And basically, to solve this one, I just move these circles into position to match the drawings. And it helpfully provides the start and end point, so you know where your point of reference are. And actually, it looks like, yeah, I would have had one dot too many there, so I think it wants me to overlap with the start and end point. So we're doing the sun first. Now for this one, I'm going to do Jupiter. So while I'm working on this, we'll just do a quick plot recap here of where we are in the investigation. It looks like for some reason the Phoenix is targeting members of a Christian solar cult called Manus Domini. Uh, why exactly, we haven't figured out yet. We don't know the motive. We don't know how this relates back to the Volker case that started this whole process. The Phoenix says it started with Volker back in the 70s. Did the cult start then? Did the cult kill Volker? I'm not clear on that. Hopefully we can get that tied back in 
at some point. What we do know is that the Phoenix and his great work are targeting up to possibly 12 people, and he's already killed six. Whether Jack and Karen are on that list, to be determined. Whether he's actually killed 12 by now, also to be determined. Let's see. Got one wrong here somewhere. So, no, that one's, that one's in the right place. That's Jupiter. Moving on to Venus. So how does Manus Domini fit in all this? How does uh, Cornelius Agrippa fit in all this? These are the questions we're sort of zeroing in on right now. Sort of the big plot questions on what the Phoenix's motivations are and what his plans might be. offset. But we're not done for Pepisoth yet. We have the second half, and basically what it needs me to do is if I push letters on my keyboard, the corresponding letter in the center of the screen is going to push the others around. And like that. Now, the funny thing here is that it's kind of a cheat, but generally the best way to solve this one is to continuously leave the puzzle, go back to hub screen, and then go back in. The letters change position every time. And many times the they're not in an ideal position to get near saw points. Like you can see there, no matter how hard I push that A on the right side there, it's not going to get towards the lower left. I was able to move the O, though, into the upper right. So what I'm going to do is every time I get a letter in, I'm going to basically refresh the puzzle until I have it in a good position. And, the, and it's fairly unusual for the game to save progress within an individual puzzle like this, so I have a feeling this is part of the intended solution got the I on the lower left. Still need the A, the L, and both ends. There's the N. First N. Still need an L, an A, and an N. I'm trying to figure out if the, the letters in the final word are actually like relevant. There's the other N. Like, looks like if you read it, left, to right, top, to bottom, it says no lane. Where is no lane? What is no lane? I'm not sure. It might come up on a later puzzle. Still trying to get the A and the L there. So close. Alright, there's the A. Still need that L. It's floating in the middle there. I'm not sure if I can hit it on this this go. No. Maybe. Alright, so we'll back out and go back in again. Nope, it's all working off now. Alright, this should be easy. Here we go. And that takes care of Pepisoth. The 28th of October. A CID informed us that the body had been formally identified as Antonio Foscarini, the Italian journalist.
The investigators believed that there was every chance we'd be next on the Phoenix's list. Uh, they strongly advised us to notify them if there were any new developments. Despite their warning, uh, we continued with our investigation. The 25th of November. We were convinced that we'd find an important clue at the crime scene. So we decided to go back there in broad daylight. to the spot where the body had been found. Karen found a clue whose meaning had obviously been overlooked by the police. So the Phoenix is definitely closing in if he has already targeted and killed someone that Jack and Karen have been talking to as part of the investigation. So next puzzle we're going to do here is Zoka. First part of which here says this calls for wisdom. Well, what he means is this calls for Sudoku. It says to calculate the number of the beast. The number of the beast is 666. So if you divide that out into six rows or six columns, then it's 111. So basically what it's looking for here is for each row and column to equal 111, and it fills in most of the numbers for us already. So it's just a matter of simple math to fill in the rest here, fortunately. Math, unfortunately, math is not one of my strong suits, but I can kind of figure this out as we go here. It's two rows. So, 21, I feel like I need a 24, oh wait, there's 24, it's up there on the, there we go. It's three rows, four rows, three to the left here, and this should be pretty straightforward, there we go. Now, the second part of this puzzle, uh, I'll be honest, I think this is the worst one in the game. It's certainly one of the worst ones in the game. It's a skill puzzle, and it's physics-based. And not only is it physics-based, but it's poorly physics-based. The goal here is to attach little nodes to this cube and try to get it into the circle, while avoiding bouncing it into the walls too hard or into the skull face. And I'm going to do an unusual step here, so you see it. I'm talking about about bouncing too hard and also the physics being wonky and it's that I'm actually just going to stop recording for the majority of this puzzle because if I actually um, recorded all of it it would probably destroy my hard drive space because it's th this one's pretty easy but it has three more levels to it and some of them are brutal and you have to work with just gravity and timing to solve it and I can kind of see where they were trying to go with this puzzle, but it's just very poorly implemented in the game. And I try to cut the game some slack on a lot of things, but I don't cut any slack on this one. It's just a bad puzzle, and there's really no two ways about it. Alright, nearly got it in here. There we go. All right, so I'll see you on the other side. This should be the end of the last puzzle. Welcome back. And that's the end of Zoka. Thank God.
still watching them very closely. So I apologize for having to skip over a lot of that one for you all, but trust me, I'm really sparing you, and hopefully I won't have to do that again in the game. So this next one, Foo, it's not giving us much to go on. So it's really always giving us. If we understand him, we'll know how to decode it. So it shows the picture from Jack and Karen's last video, and is looking for as two entry boxes. Might be text, might be numbers, but that's it. And that's where we're going to leave this one. It's a hard one, but I can trust you guys. The last email we got was Felice Maggioli finally writing back to us about his son's name a little late. So this is actually a two-part puzzle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post this, and after you guys come up with a solution, I'll tell you what the Phoenix says and let you go ahead and do part two. And we'll do both parts in next video. So this is it. In memoriam, two symbols. What do they mean? How's this translate? Good luck and good hunting out there. You guys are smart. I know you can do this. So... I'll see you back here next time. Thanks for watching.